I'm comedian Timmy Boyle, and this is the greatest live Instagram comedy experience that nobody knew about. March of 2020, I just arrived home from tour when COVID-19 shut down the world. So despite being severely technically challenged, I started a daily live Instagram show right here from my living room. Because how hard could it be? And how long could a pandemic last? Apparently longer than five months. So now, a hundred episodes later, I've called comedians as diverse in experience as they are in style from all around the world to discuss comedy, life, and, well, whatever. I had no goals, which was a great idea. I avoided tech checks, which was a bad idea. And I eventually wore no pants. The jury's still out on that one. And my OJ, over 150 days, transformed from refreshing drink to rancid mystery liquid right before our eyes. It was a random, free-flowing, hilariously messy ride into the minds and backstage lives of entertainers where anything could happen, and did, including a trip to a goat farm. Overcoming a lack of direction, resources, and tech ineptness, as well as multiple zombie cyber attacks, a project not expected to last even a week soon developed into a must-watch show like no other. But don't take my word for it. See for yourself, right here, on another episode of Calling Comedians in Quarantine. Is that it? Did we get it all? Awesome. <clears throat> well... Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in tonight. It is 7 o'clock on some day. Uh, I don't even know what day of the week it is. Everything kind of blends together. It is nice to see my mom has joined in as the very first uh, viewer tonight. Uh, no surprise, because tonight is uh, my parents' favorite comedian by a mile. Um, I've even told them that I'm a comedian, and they still uh, chant the name of Cleto Rodriguez daily in their house. Uh, it's like a, um, a celebration from pretty much five in the morning until midnight. Uh, it's like a Cleto fest. And uh, I've never been invited to the club. When I go over there, they try to tone it down a little bit, but uh, the banners and the streamers all around the house with Cleto Rodriguez's name on them is a little bit uh, noticeable. But anyways, for tonight, um, it's going to be uh, myself and Cleta Rodriguez, and my mom is going to have to uh, just enjoy us both. I guess she can focus just on Cleto's half of the screen if she needs to, but um, yeah, there you go. Well, those of you who are coming in right now, oh, look at that, Budweiser got you on the big screen. I didn't even know that was possible. I thought this was just a phone app thing, but uh, it looks like uh, Budweiser 1924 has cracked open the Instagram uh, app uh, and uh, has it now on the big screen, gathered the family around, uh, as many as a family in quarantine can be. Uh, I think they got a couple dogs too. Uh, they probably have their, uh, their orange juices out, ready to chill and, and watch. The magic that is about to happen as I invite uh, the, the one and only Cleto Rodriguez, my parents' favorite comedian, here to the show on Calling Comedians in Quarantine. This is episode 28. It has been officially four weeks of doing these shows, calling comedians from all around North America at all different levels of comedy. We have been in people's basements, been in uh, goat farms, in backyards, in storage locker facilities. Um, we did a tour of Nashville, or no, was it Nashville? I don't know. It's been a weird and crazy ride. Technical failures and seeing uh, quarantine beards and um, walls. Jason Earls had like, like, like he could change the background. He had like full on like curtains, um, depending on what you wanted to talk about. We've uh, been able to share tea boys with people. We've been in people's backyards. This has been an amazing ride. Uh, I'd like to welcome those of you who are joining right now. Yes, to my friend Roy as well, who's in here, Doug. Um, the great and mighty Doug from London, Ontario. If you don't know the great and mighty Doug, 
Um, and you're in the London area. I don't know how you wouldn't know him. He's pretty much, uh, he could be mayor of London if he wanted to be. Um, he's pretty, pretty fantastic. So uh, here's the thing. We are currently uh, uh, waiting for Cleto Rodriguez to join us here on tonight's show. Uh, just for the record, uh, Hulk Hogan, Alyssa Milano, and Yoda, and Batman are all here tonight, and we are ready to go. Um, Timmy actually had to wear pants once. When was that? I'm not wearing pants now, Paul. Was that in that one photo that I had the pants on? We'll just do a little bit of chatting here as we're waiting for uh, for Cleto Rodriguez to join us. Um, Roy, where did you see me wearing pants? I had to wear pants at some point. In fact, today's picture, I'll admit, I had to wear pants for those two. Here's the thing. Um, if I want to take pictures and post them on Instagram, uh, apparently by law, well, at least their own their own laws, you have to wear pants or they'll ban your photo. It seems a little bit extreme to me personally. When you did the show from the living room, I had to wear pants. Oh, yes. Yeah, I, so I did a, I had, to, I had my full suit on for that one. So Roy is talking about, so what, I did this, um, I did a full like 45 minute comedy show. I put on my full suit, sat on my stool, had my OJ, which is what I normally have anyways. And I actually did like a stand up set for um, this lounge in uh, Orono. And uh, so people were able to uh, to go in and watch it through the group system there. Like you could only watch it if you were part of the Facebook group. And then um, then they could donate if they wanted to. So it was super cool. Uh, that was the first time I had done some smaller shows for families. So like families can, can bring me in and, and uh, I'll hang out with them in, in kind of 20 minute, 40 minute hour blocks, whatever it may be. Uh, if you just want to kind of see my 80s stuff or chat or hear some comedy or play a board game together. I don't know, but people can do that. It's called Be Quarantine with Timmy. So you can message me if you want to have something like that. Um, and then, um, but that particular one though, was that someone had actually brought me in to do a comedy show. Here's the thing. Um, can't go to the stages. I don't even know when the next time I'm going to be able to go to the stage is going to be. So uh, be creative. I have to be creative. I'm finding this, this, this show has been a way to do it every single night at 7 p.m. here on Instagram Live. We are uh, talking to comedians from around North America. Um, and uh, this is the time for you to be creative as well. If you want to be able to entertain your friends and your family, or maybe, maybe you're a company that has a, a large face group, Facebook group following, and you want to do some stand-up comedy for them, you contact me. Drop any time, any way you can support. Um, that would be amazing during this time. Uh, what do we have here? Hopefully, Cleto remembers the time difference. Yes, that that is a true true thing. Um, we're going to be sending him off a message in a minute here. Uh, Doug says, uh, "Can I hire you to just build me up the way you do, the way you did in front of my boss?" Yes. Um, Doug, you can hire me and I will, I will come and, and just, well, I can't come, but I, I, I'll do like a video chat with your boss and just, just sit there and say that Doug, Doug is the most amazing, uh, human being. And Doug is the, here's, here's the thing. This is no, um, uh, or what is that? Or, oh, oh no, or, oh no, or, oh no. Hey, Sharika. Um, uh, just talking to Doug here about his uh, his question about building up. If you want to hire me to uh, just come and talk to your boss and say nice things about you, absolutely. Literally, I am in my living room along with everybody else, and it's now been like four weeks, and I plan on being in my living room for probably another 400 days. Uh, I know they say it's going to be shorter, but I don't believe that. So in that span, you can literally hire me for anything, seriously. I did a strip comedy show a little while ago, so... Got to go where the money is. You had to sign up for that specially. But, uh, and then I can do a tour of my G.I. Joes. There's lots of, there's lots of things. You could actually, if you get a moment, um, you should check out my, uh, the two posts that I did today on my Instagram. Um, I was very proud of them. I couldn't believe I woke up this morning and there was snow. It's like the middle of April. Uh, I don't know if you believe in uh, weather manipulation by the government. Uh, I am starting to believe that because that was so weird. Like it literally it snowed and then it stopped. Now it's spring again. Like if leaves start falling off the trees and we have like summer, spring, fall and winter all in these next couple days, nobody can tell me that the government is messing, messing around with, with the weather. 
we could play life. We could play life. Here's okay. So I'm t- trying to send a message off to Cleto Rodriguez and uh, get him in here because he is our guest tonight on calling comedians in quarantine. And so far, we haven't had a comedian. Uh, we well, we did have a comedian that forgot the time change was there, but managed to get in last minute. And um, Evan Dunn was on the show a couple nights ago, and he happened to be doing his shopping at Walmart. We met his fiance then, and did uh, did some shopping with him when he called in. So I don't know. Oh, there, wait, there's Cleto. Cleto's here, everybody. Everybody, give give Cleto a round of applause. He's not even on the show yet, but I want to acknowledge him because right now I can tell you this. My mother, who tuned in right away, um, has probably been sitting around in her living room. We're we're not on right now, Cleto. I'm going to be bringing you in here. Um, I just want you to know that my mom is watching. Let's just do this. Let's do this right now. Let's bring Cleto in here, and then I'm going to tell him the story of my mom. Here we go. Rodriguez in, ladies and gentlemen, Cleto. Rodriguez. Cleto Rodriguez. Cleto! Can you hear me? I can hear you, man. (laughs) Are you okay? Where are you? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can't hear you. Uh Uh-oh. What am I doing wrong? Um, X out. (laughs) Hold on. All right. Hold on a second, Tim. Looks like we are in Cleto's, uh, Cleto's basement or somebody else's basement. It looks like he might be trying to escape um, somebody's... Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can barely hear you. What about now? Uh, no. No? Okay, X. Let's see here. Uh, hold on. Let's see what I'm doing. Let me let me try it again. Okay. As long as we, as long as we can hear you, Cleto. Look at that. Look at my mom cracking the jokes right now. As long as we can hear Cleto. I'm like my mom doesn't even want to hear me. Um, it looked like so. It did it not look like Cleto was trying to escape from somebody's basements. Uh, we're going to talk to him in a minute about possibly the fact that he's been kidnapped and put into quarantine with somebody else's family because that looked like he had been trying to dig a, a hole um, out of a basement. That didn't look like a, a, a safe place to be. And I'm a little bit worried now. I'm worried that, that somebody else was going, get off the phone, get off the phone. And then Cleto pretended he couldn't hear us. So when he comes back on, we're going to uh, try to get to the bottom of this. Uh, for those who are tuning in right now, I don't know if you're still able to, uh, to, um, to, uh, to hear. Um, we're trying to get Clutter Rodriguez back on. My name is Timmy Boyle from Upstanding Comedy, and you are watching Calling Comedians in Quarantine. This is episode 28, and we have been calling comedians from all around North America. We are trying to get through to Cleto Rodriguez right now. It did look all right, Joy. Looked like he's boiling in there. Yeah, that, he looked like he's in San Antonio. At least I think that's where he is. Um, and he, uh, he, looked like, he looked like he was hot. But maybe, maybe it's just hot all the time. I don't, like here, it was literally snowing outside. It's the middle of April. I don't know. I don't want to ever see snow again. I should go where Cleto is. I would, I would love. Man, maybe I should find out if there's a way for me to cr- sneak across the border and get down there to Cleto's house and get into that basement and be like, like a sweat lodge and just sit there and just, just sweat it all out. That would be so awesome. That's uh, no. I mean, because Joy, it looks like you've got uh, you're you're doing like the really hot, sweaty face. My mine would be like the happy face with the sweat. Like I love to sweat. I could sit in like a sauna, and I have. I've sat in a sauna like like way beyond my physical capacity, or the sign that says "Do not stay in here longer than a half hour," or you know, people like doctor recommendations that say you probably shouldn't do that. But man, I could sit in a sauna for hours upon hours. Um, you do have a passport. My mom says I do have a passport. That is correct. But mom, I don't know if you're aware, there's like a bug going around and they've kind of, uh, they've kind of sealed off the borders because they're afraid of the, the bug. I don't know. It's like, I don't have the bug. (laughs) Just a little, it's probably allergies more than anything. (laughs) 
think it's like uh, pollen, I think. Anyways. Um, okay. Uh, oh, I escaped from Southern country, country. You escaped? Oh. Um, oh, look at the, the, wait, where did you escape from, Joy? You escaped from Southern countries. Uh, Budweiser says, hi, Mrs. Boyle. That's to my mom, I believe. Uh, thank you for giving us the gift of laughter in regards to your son, Cleto. I see. I see what you're doing there. Um, you know that he's not technically theirs biologically, right? You know that. Uh, Roy says, did you get it for him hoping he would leave home? Oh, look at the roasts coming in. The roasts are coming in. Cleto, Cleto says, okay. All right, Cleto. Cleto says, okay. So we're going to try to get him in. Um, Bangladesh. Joy, you escaped Bangladesh? Oh, that's an interesting story. Okay, uh, Budweiser, 1924. No, I met you too. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Actually, I will admit that Budweiser, 1924, is is a fan of mine. At least that's what he says. Here we go. Let's try to bring Cleto Rodriguez back in here. Let's see what happens. Cleto Rodriguez. Cleto Rodriguez. Hello. Cleto. Hey, hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can't, I can barely I can't. hear you. I can you're, barely make it out. You're, you're jumpy. <laughs> no, I was actually, I, I remember, I remember you said seven, but I, I saw you were on live. So I said, well, maybe it's seven over there. And I was working out. So I was in my, my, my garage working out. That's why I was sweating and everything. We were, uh, we were debating what was happening a lot. I, my, my initial thought was that you were actually um, kidnapped and in somebody's basement trying to escape. That was the first theory, <laughs> which seemed weird. Well, I tell you what, if, if they could make it in here, I mean, everybody's going crazy with this whole virus thing. Yeah. Good luck to them. Yeah. <laughs> if, if somebody has, if somebody has the, the gumption, if you want to say, to break into your house, kidnap you, and then bring you to their house during the virus, like bonus points for them. I would, I'd, I'd, high, I'd high five them because obviously. Yeah, I, I, I tell you what, if they come and kidnap me or break in our house, if they, if they took toilet paper before the TV, I'd be impressed. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> that's, uh, are, you, are you guys in a shortage? I actually have, a, I've got a good supply of toilet paper. I've been. I don't know what it is but we're here in, in Texas. I know for sure in Texas, they, they go, they ramstack the toilet paper. I mean, every grocery store, it's rare. Like, I mean, it's, it's like gold right now. I mean, you, you find, you find the leprechaun, you found toilet paper. You know what I'm saying? Well, we, the reason why we're able to get through the stash that we did get is because we don't spend any money on food or, or drinks. So we, we don't eat. <laughs> Therefore, the toilet paper goes a lot longer. Well, I'll tell you what, if I was over there, I'd be spending all my money on Tim Hortons. That's for sure. Hey, we don't have one over here. They're still open, man. It's essential services. My mom is sending you hearts. My mom, is, my mom was on here first tonight. Oh, your right mom's here. on here? She's right I mean, here. mom's on here? Yeah. That's, yes. <laughs> How you doing, mom? Where's she at? Which one is she? She's Janine Boyle right there. Janine Boyle. Oh, hey. How you doing, mom? Miss you. San Antonio misses you. I'm telling you, like, uh, li literally to this day, I was telling everybody, like, like she heard that you were on the show tonight, mm -hmm. and she, when you, when you left the show to like to reset your sound, um, she was, she said, literally said on here with her own, with her flesh and blood son, she said, it's okay as long as we can hear Cleto, everything's fine. She didn't even care if she could hear me. I love. Can, She's great. Can you hear me, man? Cause, cause you're, I can you're barely hear you, but I'm in my office, so it's quiet. So I can barely hear you. I mean, I can hear you somewhat. Okay, because okay, you you look like you look like you're all fuzzy. So I'm just making sure you're. you're oh no, I'm good. good. I'm good. Did you tell the story about your mom and how how that came about? No, I was I was waiting for you to get in here, and I wanted to tell it from. I wanted to hear your perspective of the story because. Basically, you came up here to do the circuit comedy tour, and right. we were. This was the first time you've been up here, and I came out one morning because we stayed at my parents' house because it's a big, big, right. budget, big budget tour. And 
you were already sitting in the living room holding court with my parents. I had never seen my dad laugh that hard in his life. They were like, <laughs> I come out to watching my parents crying and, and, and they're like, oh, Cleto, Cleto, Cleto. And I'm like, I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Never, you've never laughed at anything I've said. That they time. they were so awesome. I mean, I, I, I think the the common ground was they were in San Antonio for a minute. I believe, I believe they lived there for a little bit. Uh, is how your mom? Just, my, I don't know. Your mom. My mom had visited. Yeah, so there was a, there was a common thing about San Antonio that we got started talking about it, and uh, you know, we from then it was like. Oh man, it was like I'm here with family. Is what I said. I go, oh yeah, we're here with family. So, and after that, they, I was. They were a great audience. <laughs> I was glad to be. You I was were, more uh, glad to be, you know, there in Canada, you know, doing the tour. I was very excited about that, or the fact that I was probably not at home, and <laughs> I was like, yeah, a vacation, you know. So it was kind of cool. But then your parents was like the plus. They were like the uh, the cherry on top, the icing on the cake. Nice people, great well, people. Well, you are, you are the uh, um, you are the Mexican son that they always wanted. Um, I, yeah, I she was in the army. That's what it was. She was in the army. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So that I, that connection though is as has never faded. And in fact, we we always every time we brought comedians up for like three years on the tour before you came back. <laughs> They always had these homemade signs that was like, <laughs> welcome home, Cleto. They were so excited, and it was never Cleto. Were... The, the, the funniest one was when you had uh, Mike Goodwin there. And you... <laughs> I am not <laughs> Cleto. <laughs> every, that was every hilarious. Single comic, every single comic we had in this tour had to stand between my parents for a picture with them holding a sign saying, welcome home, Cleto. <laughs> And uh, Mike, Mike that was the best. Amazing. That was the best joke. I mean, ongoing joke I've ever seen in my life. That was it. <laughs> you you had a you had a three year um, promotion um, across the tour. Yeah, I mean, people were wondering who's this guy. What is a Cleto? <laughs> <laughs> and and then you and then you came back and you and you killed it. And it was so nice to see you again. And so nice to say goodbye. We gave you going away gifts and everything. Yeah, there. You know, it's always um, it, it's always sad leaving your folks' house. Let me tell you. I mean, they put up a good, good. They, they made me feel so welcome. I mean, it was it was great. I think every comic probably enjoys the same thing too. Yeah, uh, my, my parents. My parents thoroughly love having the comics over. Now, now she might say different. I don't know. I just always assumed that they liked, so I keep on bringing them over. But uh, she definitely, she definitely loved you. Hey, um, just uh, I, I want to thank you for joining me tonight. And just for everybody who's starting to come in, you might, you might, some of you might know Cleto, some of you might know me, but my name is Timmy Boyle. That's Cleto Rodriguez on the bottom, unless your phone is upside down. And uh, you are watching Calling Comedians in Quarantine. This is episode 28. We had Jason Earls on last night. You know Jason? Yeah, Jason. Yeah, I know Jason. You know, he has this uh, background, like it's like <laughs> a scroll, and he was able to change it to different backgrounds. Like every comedy. I saw that, like, yeah. Where are we? Uh, we are in my office, or as I like to call it, the vanity room. And uh, <laughs> my wife put up all my memorabilia in here. And uh, there's my Texans logo team right there. There's me right there uh, from the dry bar comedy deal. There's my board that I write material on. There's uh, – oh, it's a little dirty right now. But, you know, it's kind of like an office man cave kind of deal. Wait, and the, uh, the material that let's see, there's the more party? posters there. Oh, look at that. Someone did that for me uh, when I, because I work for the news, and somebody did that. And, uh, they were an artist, and they kind of painted me on there. Uh, I wish I would have made my, you know, gave me one chin instead of two, but you know, what are you gonna do? And hey, uh, hey can you show me? I have no, I haven't seen this before um, in another comic's basement. So others might have it. Show me your wall where you write your write your comedy out. That's I've never seen that done before. You wait, like post uh, jokes and you put put jokes around. Yeah, it's kind of uh, stuff that I've been working on. It's like, you know, I have, I don't, hold on a second. Can you see it there? Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Let me see how I can switch this. Oh, there you go. Uh, let's see if I can switch it. There you go. So it's, see, it's, so it's know, like a. My mom's wearing her Cleto shirt. Yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that. I love it. You know, so yeah, I, so I took a lot of it 
down because I had um, it was like a lot of old stuff that I've been using, and then I started putting up some new stuff and kind of just setting it, uh, you know, kind of like um, I got this idea a while back from uh, when I was in L.A. I was uh, with this uh, entertainment company that was short lived. You know, it's so funny. It's kind of a sad deal, actually, because the management company that I had that I was part of was uh, uh, Sebastian Manaclusco's management. And I was like, wow. Imagine, I was the guy that got cut off. I'm like the fifth Beatle. You know, they cut me off. And I was like, <laughs> wow, this is kind of sad. But anyway, so I kind of got that from them to where you kind of write in certain chunks that Right now, I got to put a, a paper up there that says quarantine because that's a whole other stuff that I'm working on. And, uh, you know, like, for instance, um, Easter, you know, uh, this Sunday, I mean, I have family members, Timmy, that were that obviously never heard of coronavirus. Right. I mean, they, they you would have thought they never, that COVID-19 didn't even exist. Really? They were calling me, hey, you coming over? I'm like, uh, no. I mean, it's like, you know, social distancing. Come on, we don't have it. I'm like, no, you can't just, they just, I go, you know, it's, it's Corona. You got Corona over there. He goes, nobody's got Corona. We got those Equis. We got everything else, but we don't have Corona. I'm like, oh. I was like, you guys are killing me. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm going to stay home. Thanks. No mask, no gloves, nothing. Like you would have thought it was a regular Easter over there at their house. I mean, like, Hey, you know, and I, I apologize for my family, folks. I'm just saying right now, I'm apologizing for them. Hey, um, <sighs> that, that board, that board um, reminds me, was it like, a, like it reminds me of like how they like put together TV shows like on a- Yeah, that's where I got schedule. it from. Was that the same sort of idea? It was, it was yeah, like a, uh, okay. yeah, because working with the, with the news, the, the living, the lifestyle shows do a lot of that. And for myself, I just took it like I would, write in blocks and I just like put married and I just write all my married material. I'll put kids and I put all my kids material. And then I just started, um, I needed something to look at, you know, it was, it's I, in my computer. It was all, it was so small and jumbled. So I, I put this big board here. I had it in my, in my other house over here. And this, my wife got me this bigger board and I just started posting everything on here and it, it worked out really well because I was able to see it and, and, you know, then I had this mirror. I don't know if you see the mirror over there. Can you see the mirror? Yeah. And there's a mirror over there. I don't know if you can see it. Hold on, let me see. And then I just do all my act outs in that mirror right over there. And uh, so I do that. And uh, it's kind of uh, I just get my facial expressions and kind of look at how it's going to come out. And uh, when I'm doing my dad or my mom or somebody that I'm acting out, the, the the visual because sometimes if it's not relatable you got to become the artist and paint a picture for everybody and you know you're good at that too so you know you like kind of go up there and you're like a picasso i saw that in the last i meant to tell you that the last uh tour that we did your set has gotten so much more visual i mean and i mean i enjoyed it the the uh the how oh, was the orange juice? Of course, I saw you drinking that. It was like it brought back right. a lot of the memories when you did your orange juice bit, you know. So that was that was a lot of it was was awesome. I meant to ask you, um, how long you've been doing stand up? Um, it was two thousand two thousand and seven when I first met you on Leland Clausen's comedy tournament. Right it was the was the first time it was on that tour that I first started doing comedy. Um, but then that's when we were with Joey Aiello, right? What's that? That's when Joey Aiello was there, right? Yeah, Joey was on there. Um, Matt Matt Falk was kind of getting started on there. Um, there was a few guys that uh, that all connected back there. And yeah, so that was when. So when I first met you, that was that was the beginning. And then Upstanding Comedy though has just been just celebrated eleven years. So it's been eleven years full time. But nice. Well, you um, you you gotten a lot I, lot better, my friend. Well, thanks, man. Well, I think that's the goal of all of us. We've been talking a lot over the last four weeks here with all different comics at different levels. And just so you know, there's there's people that are watching right now that are, are people that I know that are very young in the comedy game. Um, and so uh, so that wall that you showed us, I think, is a, is a great tip. But um, we've been talking a lot about how the, every nobody ever stops improving. Like, it's cool to see a, a guy like you who has been performing for so long 
still has like a board to kind of put things together, has a mirror, mirror to perform in front of. Like the concept that we've somehow ever arrived uh, is a completely, it's a false thought process. Yeah, it's, it's uh, for me, it, it, there was a season when I got real uh, complacent, really, just kind of, uh, I felt like I had my, I knew my set inside out, but I wasn't writing more. I wasn't expanding so much until I got this board up and started realizing, putting all the premises down on there and finding one of them and just really concentrating on how, where's the joke here? Where's the, this is the premise, but where's the funny? Where's the punchline? Where's the joke? And then you kind of just dissect it over and over and over. Then once you do that, you know, I have a final draft on the other end where I just put it there and then that's what I'm going to use. That set list is what I'm going to work out on stage. And regardless of it works or not, um, it's like throwing spaghetti on a wall to see if it sticks. You're going to see what, what happens yeah. when you get on stage. And some, some worked, some didn't. Um, matter of fact, the new joke I did when I was in Canada for that tour was my dad's uh, machismo, uh, do I love you, you That's know. Right. Yeah, yeah. That was a brand new bit that regardless, I was going to do it, and I'm going to perfect it. I got 14 shows that I can work on and see this thing manifest into what it became. And there was stuff that I took out. There was stuff that I added in. And uh, it's uh, it's like, you know, it's like you it becomes your baby, you know, these jokes you write, you know, they become your, you know, this is going to hit, you know, that this is going to somehow somewhere there's somebody who's going to relate to this. And, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, 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 watching, uh, you know, they just kind of, it comes out of you and you're performing it and you're like, yes, this is what I've been waiting for. Uh, I don't want to uh, brush by this comment that came in. Uh, big supporter of the circuit tour up here. He's seen you perform a few times and he is asking about your health. You did go through some surgeries. How is everything doing? Oh, you know what? I'm, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I had surgery. Uh, it was around uh, day before Christmas Eve. And uh, yeah, because I had to get it done before my the end of the year because insurance. And I was... Let me tell you something. I, I have to, I'm doing I got to, I'm yet to write a whole bit about this, but that's definitely going on the board because it was a uh, surgery that had to go through, you know, the lower region, the growing area. And it, let me tell you, no, no bueno. OK, <laughs> no bueno. It, it was I don't wish that on anybody. And and, I, and it was all fine and dandy till the pain meds wore off. When I had the surgery, it was like an in and out kind of surgery, but it was brutal because it's a long healing process. And Christmas Eve, I'm medicated. I'm like 10 sheets to the wind. And all they did, it was like weekend at Bernie's. They just plopped me on the couch and, hey, <laughs> I slept through Christmas, slept through pretty much New Year's. New Year's, I came to a little bit. And then I was out for. I believe it was three weeks, four weeks, and I came back to work, and somehow my surgery got infected. So I had to go back to surgery again, do it all over again, another three weeks, and then finally I got back, and I just started recently working out two weeks ago. So now I'm doing really good. So thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. So, I, so do you worry at all? Like, are you considered one of those compromised people during the virus that like because of that? Or is that something? No, no. Matter of fact, uh, the last time I was in, <laughs> last time I was in, in was, uh, when I did a gig for uh, the virus over there. And people were like, hey, don't come back with all that, you know, it's Texas, you know, and I went to Fresno and I saw people wearing masks and I was like, okay. I remember washing my hands, washing my hands a lot, no matter on the plane, outside the plane. I mean, in, in, I mean, I just washed my hands. And um, next to you know, it, I, I, by the time I got home, it was, uh, I, I mean, I bathed in hand sanitizer. I just bathed in it and uh, I lathered up with it and the whole nine. And I just, was so I didn't want to get sick, couldn't get sick, 
didn't want to get sick. But my mind wasn't even on Corona. It was on healing because it was really like all that walking from one terminal to another just aggravated it. I'm like, I'm not trying to get it, you know, infected again. So I was really kind of worried about that. I was worried about dying and the coronavirus. I was worried about healing. So, yeah, it was kind of crazy. Hey, uh, you're you're really cutting out. Is there, an, is there another place in the room? There's no, there's nobody in here. It's just me. Oh, because you're you're get you're really choppy. Uh, hey, um, that's okay. We'll work, we'll work through it. How about I'm? You want me? You want to call me? Want me to do it again? Want me to hang up and try again? Let's uh, let's let's just see if maybe it's the connection thing. Let's try one more time. Come back, come back in. Evie Ramos T. All right, um, Cleto uh, is uh, in the middle of nowhere, apparently, uh, in, his, in his office. Um, this is the thing, if you want to be able to uh, get a hold of Cleto, uh, it's going to be very, very difficult because his, his office is, uh, is, is blocked off, no signals get through there. It's actually a good place if you're, if you're a comic and you're looking for a quiet place to work. Uh, it seems like Cleto's office might be that place because uh, nothing is going to disturb you there. People aren't even gonna be able to call. You're not gonna get those calls in. Um, yeah, Cleto needs to get a better service provider. We'll pass that. Um, um, uh, we got uh, Spectrum or at and I guess those are the two options down there. Uh, Cleto seems to be back here. Um, somebody's uh, throwing out a, a shot at San Antonio. Let's see, let's try to get Cleto in here one more time to finish off this call. Um, let's try this one more time, here you go. For those that are watching, my name is Timmy Boyle. We're trying to chat with uh, Cleta Rodriguez and uh, here on Calling Comedians in Quarantine, episode 28. Let's try one more time with Cleta Rodriguez. And um, here he is. Here he is. And no. How about now? Right, it, seems, it seems okay now. We'll see how it goes. Hey, um, okay. My friend Evie Ramos yeah. is watching. <laughs> My friend Evie Ramos from here, San Antonio. Who, uh, who's your favorite Desperate Housewife, if you were just to pick one? Desperate yeah. Housewife? Oh, that's easy. That's Eva Longoria. Uh, that's why I just wanted to know if you would change it up here on the show at all, but uh, um, just checking. Just What's that? <laughs> no, not even. There was a. Uh, did you tell that story about when I tried that joke about the Proverbs 31 woman and I, I said Psalms 31? No, no. I, that, was when I, that was when I came That up. was one of the funniest things. Yeah, you came up and corrected me. You had the Bible in your hand. That was hilarious. And I, that I was read, hilarious. I read Proverbs, or I read Psalm 31, which had nothing to do with what you were talking about. Because <laughs> I said I said Psalms thirty one and I meant Proverbs thirty one and he came up as though although Cleto <laughs> although Cleto really means to say Proverbs thirty one let's just read what he did say <laughs> that is that, that was is hilarious my, my favorite my favorite part of comedy now over the years like at the very beginning I was very very scripted and I just wanted to like like do my set. But what I what I love now about comedy is is those moments like, you know, you did that on stage and like in a couple minutes, I was able to go grab a Bible, come up and do and do a whole piece off of that. That's something that I really enjoy. Do, do you like the ad lib parts of comedy? I love ad libbing. I love it. My wife hates seeing my show when she's there because I will ad lib for about. 30 minutes and then start my act and she thinks i'm gonna i'm gonna and i'll do it whole, another hour and she gets so frustrated she's like uh you know people got to go home you know and you're over here doing a whole another hour so i had to learn either go ad lib or stick to my set but i love ad libbing. i, do, I, I do really that, do uh, i do that a lot in general i'll just i'll just go in there and start talking with the crowd but it's it, it shows up a lot on the circuit tour because you know, I don't feel as much pressure on the circuit tour because it's my own clock. So I'll go up there, though, 
and and like the comedians will be told, okay, we're gonna have about a half hour first part, then I'll bring the headliner up. And then it always goes like 45 minutes to an hour and people be like, you were up there like forever. It's like, yeah, I know, I was just on a roll. Yeah. Hey, so I, I love it. I, I just rather do, ad, if I could do ad lib for 45 minutes or an hour, I would right. do it. I just, hey, what's your name? Yeah. Any birthdays? Is your name Evie Ramos? You know, that Evie kind Ramos of stuff. Evie Ramos says, Cleto is the king of ad lib. And, uh, you know, look, I'm not going to say he's not, but, you know, she hasn't seen me. So I, I don't know. Maybe we should, you know, have an ad lib off at some point. Yeah, she was our, one of our, news, our oh. late night newscasters and uh, uh, um, evening newscast. She was my one of my favorites, actually. I'll, I'll, I'll say that out loud. She was one of my favorites. I hated to see her leave, but yeah, she was one of my favorites. And uh, it became, you know, really good friend. She's awesome at what she does. Her husband's awesome too, and. Uh, She's got a good family over there, so yeah, she's you, good. Uh, so you don't only do comedy, though. You you actually have like a you still have a segment on the new show, right? Like called Where's Plato? Is that right? Yeah, it's a little segment on the news over here in the morning. Uh, it's called Where's Plato? It's a man on the street kind of piece, humor piece, and we kind of highlight a lot of community events and so on, and uh, just kind of bring funny to this gloom and doom kind of stuff that we get in the mornings and uh, just to make it a little lighthearted and it's been working, been there now eight years. So it's pretty cool, but just kind of, you know, stay in my lane, that kind of thing. I mean, and have fun with it. How do you do that? I mean, like I, I tried to do morning radio for like eight months and I'm like, I'm not a morning person. Most comics aren't. We're late night people. How are you doing a morning show at four thirty and then having the late, the late night comedy life? You know, Timmy, it's a funny story because when my boss that hired me, uh, what, Jim, yes, I did make my new Fiesta medal. It's actually stuck in China. It's got a little mask on it. But, um, no, uh, they, I, my boss that hired me, uh, we had an interview. Now, now he was, his title was news director, Timmy, and um, one of the things was, can you see me, Timmy? Because you're kind of buffering. Yeah. I can't see you, but can, can you see me? I can me? see you and I can hear you. Okay. So um, my the story there was my boss came, uh, you know, he, he his title was news director. And for a comedian, news director, all that means is intern. I mean, we know VIP, CEO, GM. We know that means something, but news director, that doesn't mean intern to me. So we're there at this restaurant doing this audition. And when he told me he was the news director, I was like, oh, man, this guy brought the intern. So I thought the intern was interviewing me. And it was actually my boss. And he's actually telling me, um, you know, honestly, this is how I'm talking to my boss. Timmy, ask me how long you've been doing stand-up. Plato, how long have you been doing stand-up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you pass the ketchup? <laughs> this is how I'm talking to my boss, because I think he's the intern. <laughs> so treat he starts like laughing that. Laughing that I don't. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, all the time. Yeah. No. No, this guy, I just felt like, oh, man, I, I, I did not feel like he was there. I thought they brought the intern to the interview. Like, yeah, go see what he's about, that kind of thing. And I was kind of like, oh, you know, that's kind of a bummer. But next thing you know, um, he's asking me, like, he's laughing because he didn't realize that we, that he, I don't know what he is. So we, I'm making him laugh crazy. And I asked him, what time do I need to be at the station? And he says, yeah, you need to be there at 430. I said, that's cool. I dropped my kids off from school. And he goes, no, 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 in the morning. I said, uh, you know, I'm a comedian. I don't start my second dream till 4.30 in the morning. Yeah. He's like, well, that's the gig. So I started doing it. And honestly, Timmy, I was not going to take it because I'm not a morning person. Yeah. I'm not a morning person at all. And I was not going to take it, but and, uh, I was, it was like waking up flight on the weekend. So it was no big deal. Just waking up flight every morning. So that's all that was. Back to 
the station, my friend said, hey, did you go to the interview? And I said, yeah. She goes, I go, but he didn't show up. She goes, what do you mean? I go, yeah, he didn't show up. And she goes, what are you talking about? I go, yeah, the intern came. What do you mean the intern came? And I said, yeah. And she goes, is that him over there? I said, yeah. What's he doing in that office? And she goes, that's our boss. So I went over there, and I'm, like, knocking on the door, and I'm like, you can I get a do-over? <laughs> he goes, no, we're going to try you out. And uh, I was on a three-month audition, Tim. And I finally went in there and I said, look, I'm not getting any insurance, no benefits. I said, you don't know by now, Haas, you're going to hire me. I'm not waking up this early in the morning. And he goes, no, no, we're going to hire you. So that's how I got the gig. <laughs> wow. Well, I don't, uh, this guy. Now, hey, Timmy, I don't know if you've seen, but I got a new podcast too now. That's been pretty good. Yeah, I, I did. I did start. I started to see that going out. But uh, remind me of the name of it and how people can find that. It's called, it's called the Kletho Experience. And what that is, is uh, the premise is a little different than your regular comedy podcast. Um, the, the premise is I wanted to do something a little different to where I was going to benefit some folks and help them out with some issues that they may be going through. And it's a comedian with not one, but two professional trained therapists. And it's when comedy meets therapy. And, there's, and it equals a lot of issues. So whatever we're going through, whoever comes on and they got an issue of some sort, I got, you know, we pretty much got somewhat of an answer to go ahead and help them with that on a daily basis. So uh, the way to get to it, and, and again, we have some, some shows are hilarious. Some shows are, you know, uh, not so hilarious. They're more, you know, deep in, in discussion and so on. But it's, uh, it's for, it's, it's a different kind. So I, de I definitely want to do some different. I, mean, I try to bring the humor as much as I can and uh, I'm not so much on the serious topics, but, you know, just here, there before just daily topics and beginning of the show. But you can go to it on our website, www.thecletholexperience.com. And uh, you can subscribe it. If you could share it with everybody, that'd be awesome. And um, it's uh, it's a great little uh, uh, podcast. We just started about, four weeks ago and you know it's been uh i mean i've interviewed everybody from small business owners that are going through getting hit with this quarantine you know thing and uh this virus and then also uh my cameraman i got him on there and uh he started breaking down and you know we had some issues there with grandpa and uh so yeah it was kind of uh kind of a touchy thing there so, so that's at the cleto yeah. so if you can that'd be cool the Kletto Experience dot com. Is that right? The Kletto dot com. Yeah, and hopefully once I get the uh, the capability to go ahead and uh, get call ins, you know, callers in, I'll, I'll definitely love to have you on there as well, and a lot of other com yeah, comics that would be too. Yeah, awesome. I mean, what I love about that, and like when you're saying, you know, sometimes it's not that funny, is like we've had now like this. This is episode twenty eight here, and my my goal of these shows um, was to have no goal. And I just really want each comic to kind of, you know, do their thing. And we've been, you know, we've been all over the place in p different environments and people telling different stories and some are a little more serious. And I think what, what to me is cool is that sometimes people watch comedians and they think that everything we do is funny all the time. And I just want to provide an opportunity for people to maybe laugh, maybe be encouraged, but at the more saying, see us in our off stage environment and just hear some stories and, and see sides of us that maybe they didn't know was there. Like we're not always just cracking jokes 24 seven. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And that's the, one of the things that when I came across, I w went in for their podcast, how that came about. I went in for their podcast and they had a nice little setup and I had just been kind of praying for uh, a change and something different. And I wanted to have my own podcast, but honestly, I didn't have the funds for it. I didn't have, and I really got blessed with this one because they kind of reached out to me and said, how would you like to do it here? We'd love to, you know, do it. And then I felt, I felt like, what if we did it together, you know, and had them kind of co-host with me. And, and I think the, the premise for that came about where um, I thought a lot about Robin Williams during that, you know, like nobody, nobody except probably his close family knew what he was going yeah. through. And what we couldn't see it, we just saw talent. We just saw somebody that was just 
phenomenal on stage, on TV, and so on. And, you know, it was just, but then to see the other side, you know, to find out after he passed what he was going through and what he was dealing with on a daily basis. And uh, I can relate on uh, some sort of, uh, you know, when there's there was a, um, uh, um, a season where I found myself in like a depression and, a, a, you know, and I started getting like anxiety and just, you know, wondering if that was hereditary because my dad was diagnosed um, with bipolarism and he has anxiety and so on. So I became, uh, somebody asked me a while back if I wanted to be the superhero for NAMI, which is the National Alliance for Mental Illness. And I remember the reason I got involved there was because of my dad and what he was going through on a daily basis. He fights it every day. He just recently now, Timmy, just started taking his medication. And that has been helping him a lot. And we thank God for that because, honestly, I mean, you don't know what it is and what someone's going through till you know, you somewhat – try to understand what, how to get in their shoes. And uh, when this thing came about, you know, there's people that, you know, on the surface, you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what kind of thing, what the financial situation is, you don't know what, where they're at in their, in their, um, in their life, you know, in their marriage or what. I mean, we want to cover everything from depression to anxiety to happiness to what really helps you along the way and you know is it faith is it is it uh therapy or is it you know just working out whatever it is you know we want to, we're all working together and being able to as the therapist they trust the process you know and all this is new to me as well and to be able to have them come along and me go on the ride with them is kind of a different uh format if you will to uh be able to uh, kind of, um, you know, shine on that area. So, on that area. So, we're very, very, very. I feel very blessed to be able to have this podcast, and we have a Facebook page. If you can go and you can see some of the posts and some of the videos on there on the Club of Experience, and uh, you know, it's kind of a cool little deal. It's it's fun, and uh, I mean, we've had a couple of local comedians on there and uh i mean it, it's it's open to anybody that would like to be part of it you know and it's not just people that are um i mean everybody's got a story and that's what we want to be able to highlight and showcase and, and showcase them and it's more than just uh 15 minutes of fame it's more like 45 yeah. minutes so so we would love to have everybody come on and you know, be well, part I, think, of the I think we all get like, especially as comics. I mean, one of the reasons why, I, you know, one of the reasons why I do what I do and, 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 and I'm sure you do and as well as others is that we know that comedy can be healing. You know, we give that we give these people a break from their a hard day, a hard week, a hard, you know, year, a hard life, whatever it may be. Um, it's, it's like the government doesn't say that we're an essential service right now, but we should be. Um, but sometimes, though, when we're doing those things, we don't do the introspective look, which is like, it took me, I, I went into some sort of, I don't even know what I would call it, but some sort of depressive state a few years ago that there were some people in my life that recognized, but because I'm always trying to be, you know, put out that positivity first and, and trying to be that person to make people laugh, I didn't realize until a couple of years after looking back and going, oh my goodness, I didn't think that it was possible for me to go into that depressive state because life is life is good. I enjoy life. I, you know, I'm, I'm positive. And yet I went through that period of time where I just, you know, I dropped the ball on my own business and on comedy. I wasn't motivated and I had, I had sunk down, but I didn't see it coming because I was so focused on just trying to be that positive light in everyone else's life that I didn't even notice my own, you know, you know, crumbling. You're absolutely right. I remember for myself, two years ago, I had a really bad storm and it hit my marriage really hard. And I remember just going through the motions. And as a believer and the follower of Christ, you know, we perform at churches quite a bit. And, you know, there was times that as professionals, you know, in the comedy scene, we, we the show must go on. And we hide all that. We sweep it all under the rug just to get on stage and somewhat for comedians, you know, that's our outlet. 
that's what we do. That's where, we're, where our sanctuary is. And we find our, our, our peace, you know, or our, for a moment. It's not just so much for them, but for us mm -hmm. to go ahead and just, you know what, I'm going to get away for a minute from what's going on in the world. And let me just bring my gift to everybody here because it's also going to heal me as well. That laughter is what we got in this business for. That laughter is what the therapy was in my life. That laughter is what I was contagious to. That laughter is what I was just, mm -hmm. that got me through it. And uh, the applause and just being able to, supply that gift on stage during that time but at the same time as soon as it's over and it's done you're back to the you know the issues at hand and you know whatever it is you're going through and for me it was just one of those things where i and 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 i touch on this on the podcast that will be airing in a few weeks and it's just me and the therapist and i and i kind of brought the fact that as believers you know, people think we have it all, all perfect and, and figured out, and we don't. Hence, you know, Jesus Christ, we need him, you know, pretty much every day. Do I fail? Yes. Do I fall short? Yes. Do I, do I miss the mark? Yes. But I don't live in that, that state of pity anymore, but I get back up and dust myself off and keep moving forward. And, and that's what we got to do. But at the same time, we got to recognize, okay, where's the change going to come from? That was the thing. I couldn't change or I didn't want to change. And that's where the whole word repent came from and, and what it meant and change from and turn away. And that was the one safety blanket, or I should say uh, the depression uh, state that I was in, which became, which became a, like a, a security blanket. And I was just leaning on that and it wasn't getting me anywhere. And as much as I would pray, as much as I, I mean, on, on paper, Timmy, I was a Christian. I was a believer. Everybody knew that. But in my heart, I mean, I hadn't read. I hadn't ministered. I hadn't done any of that. And because I was so caught up in what I was dealing with. And I remember going to church and everybody there knows you. Like you said, they know you as bringing that light, that gift, and just being on all the time. And I had one brother one time tell me hey brother and i had a rough week can you make me laugh i'm felt like telling him why don't you make me hey, laugh yeah, yeah. you know make me laugh you know <laughs> i was like inside that's what i wanted to say i just came out with oh sure maybe later brother just not right now but you know and you just you know where you're at and uh to be genuine with yourself and genuine with your walk is where i had to be and I remember by the time I got to the CCA this year, I hadn't been there in a long time. And I went there and I felt like I had missed everybody. I missed all the comedians. I hadn't seen them in years. And finally got a chance to go back and see everybody. And it felt really good. But at the same time, I was everything, you know, it's like you, you're going through the motions and then you got to figure out, okay, how am I going to get out of this funk? How am I going to get out of this? And, uh, that's when I just totally leaned on whatever mustard seed of faith I had, and, and well, it got me through. In, Instagram's going to kick us off in about four minutes because you can only run these lives for so long before they tell you to start over. So um, we're going to oh, ring okay. the bell there. That's the end. But listen, um, I, I want to just, just piggyback quickly on this before we say goodbye. Everything you were just saying there, people, um, when, they, when they see everybody hurting around the world, they tend not to look at the comedian because the comedian like you said is often seen as the one to come in and, and bring that laughter and so i'm going to talk to everybody now on, on my behalf and cleto's behalf and the other comics who have been on this show and, and comics around um we've had to be creative to find that outlet right you, you you've created a podcast i'm creating the show just some way to kind of because we can't be on stages anymore but what i what i would implore those who are watching and, and who are fans of myself or cleto or just comedy in general is also be creative find a way to utilize us we have technology you can connect with cleto um you know i've done i've done live live shows for people um through the phone over this in this quarantine time and i would just say you know give cleto a call you know maybe you can arrange to do something to entertain your family or or your group or whatever it may be um and realize that you know um 
we've got this gift to do too. And, uh, um, you know, we need to do it sometimes. It kind of, it's part of who we are. So um, I, got a, I got a minute 46 left here, Cleto. I want to say so much. Uh, thank you for being on the show. Um, you're buffering right now, so I don't know if you can hear me. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. You said I was number 28. I'm glad you got to the R's. <laughs> <laughs> I plan on get, I plan on getting right through to the to to the Zeds if I if I know anybody. Hey, I love you, man. Um, I'm so glad that you're able to come up here on the tour again. And uh, when this thing ends, we'll we'll get together in person. But to everybody, follow Cleto Rodriguez. Uh, Google him, uh, thecletoexperience.com. Check out the podcast, buddy. I love you. Much love to your family for me as well. And we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Got it, brother. Love you too, man. Take care, bro. Bye, mom. Right, See you later. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Calling Comedians in Quarantine. Please take a moment to like, share, subscribe, and ring the little bell so you and your friends don't miss any of the laughs. Episodes will be uploaded here at Timmy's Shorts daily until I run out. And be sure to check out the description below for links to connect with myself or my guests on social media, support us by buying merchandise, and also download the podcast version of this show. Until next time, remember, your brain... It's for thinking, not for eating. So just say no to zombies. My name's Timmy Boyle.